Chapter 1 Spectre Xanthanaku isn't dead. I will find him. Kalak warrior Manda Kidfar, before she vanished about 800 years ago in 8200 New Kazna calendar. 9000 New Kazna calendar, Kaznirfar system, first galaxy. The Kazna personal star cruiser question streaked out of Hyperion space and fell in with streams of traffic flowing toward a busy space station. The station was Red Song, one of the many holdings of the noble Kidfar family. A hub and a port of call at one of the most important systems in the first galaxy, they dealt in trade, ship repairs, and processed materials mined from properties owned on the green and blue planet below. Kaznirfar, the gateway to the rest of the galaxies. It was above this planet, long ago, that the wormhole had been found. The wormhole led to the second galaxy, and in the second galaxy, the Kazna had found wormholes to the third and fourth galaxies. As Zong Kidfar understood it, his family made trillions of credits every yev. Much of that money came from Red Song. Wincing, Zong entered a family code, and he waited for the inevitable response. He glanced to his left at the steel-gray robot sitting next to him. The machine was tall, skeletal in build, but sturdy. It had a perfectly round head with a sensor ring that glowed blue around the equator. Otherwise, it had no semblance of a face. You seem on edge, Master Kidfa. Q said in the cultured voice of a capital city noble. I don't understand why father called me, Zong said, reaching up and scratching at his black-haired scalp, silver eyes darting away from the robot, back toward Red Song. Perhaps he wished to see you. Zong rolled his eyes. You're a real help, Q. I'm a battle bot, master, Q responded. That is what I do best, not philosophizing about internal family politics. You're not just a battle bot, my mechanical friend, Zong argued. You can go beyond your programming. I thought I explained that to you when I pulled you out of that war zone on Declory. Sorry, Master, I'm still learning. Zong chuckled and then the calm beeped. The Kazna man's heart leapt a little in his chest and he reached for it, switching it on. Zong, it's good to see you. Kyong Kidfar greeted as a whisper image of the man blossomed up in glowing, flickering three dimensions from the cockpit's dash. Kyong Kidfar was a large man, broad in the shoulders, with long dark hair that was pulled back into a neat ponytail. His beard was trimmed and noble. He had a hooked nose that Zong hadn't inherited from him, but Zong had his father's eyes. Kyong was dressed in a richly black suit and had on a matching shirt under it. His tie was crimson. The Kidfar family sigil was on his left breast, a blue raven. There was usually unrelenting sternness in Kyong Kidfar's face and eyes, a look that Zong had become used to in his life. It was odd to see his father right now so shaken. Father? Zong said. Is something wrong? Land as quickly as you can in the family hangar. I will clear the way. Say you understand. I understand, Zong responded. Kyung nodded, then his image flickered away. Does your father usually act in such an emotional manner? Q asked curiously. No, Zong all but whispered. He looked up, focusing his eyes on the red hull of the seeming stacks of saucer disks that made up the Red Song space station. His father really did clear the lines of traffic for him and it was mere moments before he was settling his Kazakui 40YU-2000 down in a broad, rectangular hangar bay. Sleek, expensive ships were landed about the edge of the room, just part of the Kidfar collection. Zong left the cockpit with Q on his heels, and they exited the ship down the landing ramp. Zong stopped in his tracks when he saw his father personally hurrying across the hangar bay toward him. When he reached Zong, he stopped, looked on the young Kidfar with an expression of... Zong couldn't place it. He'd never seen his father like this before. How was your flight? Kyuong asked. Zong stared at the man, arching a dark eyebrow. Son? Dad, are you all right? Zong finally asked. Kyuong's cheek twitched. Then he turned and started away. Follow me, he grumbled. Zong obeyed. There was a lift in the corner of the hangar bay that went straight up to Kyuong's office. When the doors to the lift hissed open, Zong was treated to a view of the gorgeous white and black chamber. The room was large, with smooth curves to everything. It looked like it flowed through this section of the station, giving the impression that it had been spread out with a paintbrush in three dimensions. There were bookshelves on the walls, glass cases too, holding priceless trinkets the Kidfar family had obtained over the Yev. Here Zong saw an ancient Moeda helmet. There was a shard of the first forged Kallax sword. In another case, Zong saw a glittering crown from the feudal pre-Dejshar era of Kaznadia. 
A flowing desk was set before an oval window that looked out over the broad stretch of Kaznirfar's globe and the streams of traffic going to and from. In the far distance, on the other side of the world, was a glowing hole in space. Ribbons of blue, white, and red wound together in a sort of very slow, turning whirlpool of light. It was the wormhole. It looked so small from here. Kyung led Zong and Kyu to the desk, and then he turned and looked at his son with that same expression as before. The man looked humbled. Dad, please, Zong said, suddenly feeling really worried. What's wrong? You'll have to excuse your father. A woman's voice rang out behind Zong, causing him and Kyu to twist and look. A shock shot through Zong when he recognized the tall, fair-skinned woman. She had a kind face, beautiful lines. Her hair was dark and hung loosely down her back. She wore a calic raiment of black, gray, and blue, and she stared out at Zong with silver eyes. Impossible, Zong said, staring at the woman, feeling his hands trembling a little. Your father didn't believe it at first either, Zong, the woman chuckled with a smile. But I am who you think I am. No, it's impossible. You should have... I mean, you vanished over 800 years ago. Even if you had, against all odds, managed to live longer than any chasm in existence, you don't look like you've aged a day. In fact, you look younger than when you vanished. All true, the woman responded with a small nod. Zong blinked. Why was she so calm? Kyung stepped up beside Zong and placed a hand on his arm. It's true, Zong. It is she. I've had it checked and quadruple checked and her testimony is absolutely without fault. Zong stared and then snapped his attention back to the woman. He couldn't speak. He just stared at her. This is impossible, he thought. I am Manda Kidfar, the woman offered into the silence of the office. I am sister to your forefather, Tuang Kidfar. Eight hundred years ago, I went hunting for the foul wistrel, Igman Grode, with the hope of finding a way to save my Calic learner, from the cruel fate Igman cursed him to. All these long yevs I have been doing just that, and, as you can see, I have not grown old. I am still alive. How? Zong managed to ask. Amanda Kidfar shrugged. I have no idea, but I think it has something to do with the battle Xanth Naku and I had with Igman before Xanth was lost. Some sort of Dorash changed me. Zong stared. He wondered, is it possible? Zong was still learning the ways of Dorash. It was a long road, and a legend like Igmen Grode would know far greater and deeper powers than Zong, who was barely an apprentice wistrel. Manda stepped toward Zong. I have found Igmen Grode. I think I have found a way to save Xanth, but I need your help. My help? Zong asked in dismay. Well, more accurately, I need you to give me an audience with your wistrel teacher. I believe he can help me. Zong laughed. Rule sent me away. Things in Kajna space are... A dark shadow fell across Zong's heart. He hadn't wanted to leave, but Rule was right. He needed to focus on his Zayn warriors now, and despite Zong's eagerness to learn the ways of Dorash, his inexperience and ineptness made him a liability. If you know anything, you'd know I... I'm not training with Rule anymore, Zong sighed. He sent you away, yes, Manda agreed, but you can get me through the Krum war zone, to Kashna, to Rule. I can take it from there. Zong looked to his father in exasperation. She's family, son. To a kid far, that is the most important. Zong couldn't help the snort that escaped him. Are you kidding me right now? We haven't talked in Yev's father. Then you call me out of the blue and... Your father has been... Reminded, Manda said, cutting Zong off. I've shown myself to all of the kid far family leaders over the last 800 years, Zong. They've all known about me and my dedicated preservation of our values. Still, some, she looked at Kyung, iciness in her silver eyes, some forget and must be reminded. Business and credits are fine. Feuds between noble houses are meaningless. And family, family is everything. She turned to Zong again. Why are you learning the ways of Dorash and the Zayan warriors? I wanted to help people but the Calic wouldn't accept me. Now you have a chance to help someone, Manda said with passion. I know what's been said of you, how you've been outcast. It is exactly because of who you are that I need you, Zong Kidfar. Now, will you let this plea for help pass you by? Or will you be a Kidfar? The way Manda smiled at Zong 
He knew she knew his response before he ever said it. Thank you for listening. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And there are more episodes on the way.